Hi guys, in today's video we're doing an oil change on a 2000 Chevy Blazer. There's nothing new to those of us who have done this before, but for those of us who are trying it for the first time or thinking of trying it to either save money or to just get into doing their own work, these are the basics. You need your oil, and I'm not endorsing any one company over the other. I just happened to buy this because it was on sale. It was under $2 a quart. You'll need your filter. In your manual, it'll tell you what type of oil, whether it's 5W30, 10W30, or so on, and how many quarts, and the filter that you'll need. Besides your oil and filter, you'll need some basic tools. You need some ramps to get your vehicle up on. Unless you have a little bit of a hill you can pull up on, I've done that before. But today we're going to be using the ramps, a pair of car jacks for safety. Once your vehicle's up on the ramps, car jacks are supported if these ramps should ever give. You'll need a, a backstop for your rear tire. If you don't have something like this, a concrete block, a brick, something to keep that tire from rolling. You'll also need your wrenches to get the oil out of your oil pan. I have used metal oil wrenches for the last few years, but I found this to be more convenient. One size fits all, it's a rubber strap, and it fits all sizes. I've even used it on lawn mowers with filters, and I find this to be very easy to use and very versatile. And a funnel to get your oil in without making any messes. You also need a bucket or an oil pan for the oil you're removing. This bucket will fit under the blazer once it's up on the ramps. I use a piece of cardboard to lay on. Uh, I'm laying on stone and also any drips, the cardboard will absorb it. I need some paper towels or a few rags to uh, wipe up any messes you have. And also, you want to wear some old clothes. Now to get started, I'm going to start up this uh, blazer. Have it run for a minute or two to warm up the oil. I'll be getting it up on the ramps. And we'll be back once it's up on the ramps to show you how we proceed from there. So I have the blazer up on the ramps. You see I have the car jack under this one side. I have the wheel blocked in the back. I have the other ramp and the car jack supported on this side. One of the advantages of doing this yourself is you won't be using an air tool and stripping out the oil plug. I'm not sure if I got a good video on this. I'm just shooting it all around. And we have a 9 16th that doesn't fit on there. But we have a socket. But we have a, a metric that fits on it a little on the loose side. This nut is stripped a little bit and I'm not sure what size it is. So I'm going to go with this metric and um, we'll get it out with that. Now once this oil is dripping, I have the bucket to catch it in. And, and on the Chevy, the oil filter when you come in from under, when you come in from the front of the truck, the oil filter's under this flap. This screws in loose, just drops down, and there's the filter. So once we drain the oil from the pan, we'll come back and we'll drain what's ever left in the filter out on this end. Okay, you can hear that oil dripping in the background. There's still a few more drops coming out of the pan. Now I have the strap wrench on the filter. Okay. Once you have it loosened, in the bucket here. I'm not sure which way this is going to flow out. It's the first time I'm doing it on the van, on the blazer like this. I'll let it drip this way a little first. It looks like when it's going to come down, it's going to hit this and then drip out the back here. So we'll let it come out slow into this and uh, take a little out of time. Okay, I got a steady stream going right into the bucket. And it looks like that's it. All right. Keep in mind there is oil in that bucket. And if at all possible, avoid the splash. The splash, you see the splash? Okay guys, we're back. Uh, I got bit 
got past that big splash, cleaned up a little bit. And I noticed these two filters are two different sizes. At the auto parts store, this is the filter that they gave me. I gave them the specs, and this one you can see is quite short. I put this in there, it does fit in, and the diameter on this lines up with the diameter on the old one. So with that in mind, I think I'm okay, just that it's a little bit more filter. Maybe the first one wasn't correct, I don't know. What I did was pour a little bit of oil into the cap, and before we put this filter on, you want to coat the rubber gasket with fresh oil, not the dirty oil. A little tight in here trying to hold the camera and doing the work. Around this flange, I wiped it off a little bit, didn't scrape it, just wiped it with a paper towel. And simply screw this filter in. And like I said earlier, I'm not sure if the filter that was on there was the wrong size. It was done in the shop. They might have just threw on whatever they had. I don't know. Open the auto parts store, gave me the right filter. Anyway, the way this goes on, get your hands clean. You don't want any oil on your hands, so you get a good grip on it. You want to tighten this hand tight. Once it's snug, you want to give it a quarter turn, uh, three quarters of a turn to a full turn. Now, it's not recommended, not required. But just to show you how this strap wrench would work, you put it you would put it around the filter. Oh, in this case it goes this way. And you would just snug it up a little bit. Okay. It's a little tight in here because this has that trap door. And I'm hitting the spring on the door. These filters will crush. And I'm comfortable using this strap filter to tighten it up a little bit. Again, it's supposed to be hand tightened. I just gave it that little extra snug. And if you can see over here, a little oil is dripping. There's no oil in the, in the car yet, in the engine. But a little, little oil is dripping out. What you want to do after you, tight, after you put the plug back in, fill it with oil, you run it for a while, you want to make sure you don't have any drips underneath. This is the problem you run into when you bring it into a shop. I didn't strip this, this was stripped. That's why I was having a hard time getting a wrench on it, trying to focus that in. In these shops, especially if you go to these uh, quick oil place changes, they always use an amount of gun on it. And taking it off might not be so bad, but putting it on, it shouldn't be put on with uh, air powered tools. And taking it off, if they slip with that, you'll mark up these sides. I'm going to dress this up a little bit. I'm going to put that oil plug, I'm going to put this plug back in. I don't think you need to see that. I'll tighten it a little bit. I get it snug and I just give it a little bit more. I don't have the torque on this. If you have the, um, for those that never did it before and you're not sure on how tight it should be, if you could find the torque on it and use a torque wrench, that's the best way to go. Uh, for the rest of us that do it by feel, that's great. Just don't do this to it. And you also have to be careful that these threads don't strip out the oil pan itself. Then you have a different set of problems. Luckily for me, it was just the outside part of the bolt that was done. So once this plug is in, I'll be filling the oil back here. That's why I use that long funnel. It reaches in there. On every car, where you fill the oil will be a different location. It's normally marked, engine oil, and they usually tell you what weight oil to use. In this case, 5W30. Well guys, I hope you found this video useful. If so, give it a thumbs up, pass it along. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, be safe, and have a great day.